doing good, Eddie. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Eddie. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a bunch of, a couple of things sure, just so sure, we sure. can get into it. Um, and I'm going to start with the most important question of all, of course. What do you think of Vice? And I Look, brought you the new issue. <laughs> this is like, um, Vice is modern. What do you mean, modern? Well, look at this cover. It's, it's a modern cover. It sends out a certain kind of message mm. that it's um, hip and modern, and you're going to find out stuff, you know, when you, when you read this. That is a sticker, and if you want it, it peels off. Oh, I see. <laughs> so you see, it, it's like um, PG-13. It's PG-13. And then the it goes to X. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it just... It's all there for you to see. Well, <laughs> I'm surprised they just put a little one on, on there. Yeah, it's <laughs> do you use Facebook a lot? Are you a no, Facebook? I don't, don't do that. No Facebook, no Twitter? Twitter I do. Twitter you yeah, do? Yeah, I love Twitter. What, what's the difference between Twitter and Facebook? I don't know. I don't know Facebook. <laughs> and Twitter, you just have Twitter friends and you talk from time to time. I don't Twitter enough probably. But I tell them what I'm doing and ask them what they're doing. It's a feeling that there's many together. And you, you like group communion. I do in a way because I think, you know, they say there's a collective consciousness. And every single thing that people think and feel and do feeds into this collective consciousness. I'm, you know, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions on, on the songs and you know, some of the lyrics and some of the sounds, but I'm not looking for the meaning of these things. Sure, sure. I know you've said about the record that it came out of the joy of creation and that you're not necessarily sure what some of these things mean. Well, in a way, I know what they mean. It's the same as cinema. You have to know um, some amount of what it means, but the thing about music, it's very abstract. And um, so because it's abstract, the meaning is different for different people. And it doesn't help to say what it is for you. It's up for everybody to, you know, f to figure a thing. So I'm gonna, I figured a couple things, and maybe sure. you can tell me like if it's interesting yeah, yeah. and not sure. it's not about true or false. Sure. So the first thing I wanted to ask is the clown of crazy clown time mm -hmm. related to the rubber suited clown of fear and anxiety. The suffocating rubber clown suit of negativity. Of negativity. Yeah, it's strange because clowns were meant to really make kids happy. <laughs> and there's, you know, a feeling to a lot of clowns, circus clowns, that um, it actually produces fear in, in, the, in the kids or some kind of anxiety. It was crazy clown time! Crazy clown time! A clown suit of negativity. This is the stress, anxieties and worries, depression, fear, hate, this kind of stuff. And this is a heavy, heavy, you know, thing. It's like being in a suffocating rubber clown suit. You can see how, in a way, partying um, has some little thing to do with uh, release of stress. A lot of times parties in your world tend to go overboard. There's a point where Maybe they're about relieving stress, but then they be can become really destructive. They're not about well, relieving stress. Nobody says, let's have a party so we can relieve some stress. <laughs> let's have a party so we can have some fun. Right. And fun is, um, like everything, a relative thing. What's fun for one may not be fun for another. Right. But in the crazy clown time, this, for this bunch, is what they call fun. Oh, Danny, pour beer all over. The video depicts that fun like a little um, obsessive because everyone is doing their one thing. Yes, it's activity, intense activity, driven by the music and driven by the beer. Yeah. Do you ever stand back and look at humans as kind of 
silly for inventing these little activities to to entertain themselves or is it cool and is it part of everything's okay Hitty. <laughs> um you know if you think of a human being um people say how come how come i'm here you know what i mean right some people think that ask yeah. that question i do every day yeah how come how come I'm in the fifth grade, you know, is a kind of another question. Mm -hmm. So that you can um, one day graduate and get out of school. Okay. And another word for graduating is gain enlightenment. Right. Then you got it made. And the characters in the song and in the video, where are they in, the, in that graduate, in that, you know, in that... <laughs> uh, if you take um, a ladder, for instance, as, a, as a something to think about. A ladder uh, that sort of represents um, stages of consciousness. Right. And this ladder would be very, very tall with many, many, many rungs. Now, maybe um, the way that's that party is, you wouldn't say that they're on a real high rung. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. Okay. I would agree. <laughs> How important is music to your art life? All the different outlets are important to me. All the different art forms. But music is really thrilling in a lot of ways because it involves more than one person. It's a group effort. And in this case, it's me and Dean. But um, like I couldn't make this music on my own. Dean probably wouldn't make this music on his own. But when you put a combo together, out this comes. You know, well, like when if I work with Angelo Badalamenti, right. Angelo and I are, are another combo. And when we work together, a certain thing comes out. Right. I work with somebody else, a certain thing, you know, comes out of that particular combo. And it's a magical thing, these combos. And what was it like, for instance, to put Karen O in the middle of your combo for well, Pinky's Dream? Well, then you get dream. Pinky's Dream. You know, that's what it was like. Pinky's Dream. You know, she came in uh, totally uh, just off the street. I am hand her these lyrics. We play the track for her a bunch of times. And she caught, caught the essence of Pinky. When she says the word Pinky, it's so beautiful the way she says his name. Pinky comes to life. life. She wants him to watch the road. Yeah, he's not paying attention, really. They could have a bad accident. <laughs> but ro roads are really important to your work. Even in this record, there are a lot of roads and highways. Well, you know, you've heard the expression driving music. <laughs> yes. And um, so there's certain songs that are so great to drive with. There's something about traveling to different places, even just mentally right. or musically, that's real special. And this whole thing of highways, people have been writing about it and, you know, dreaming about it. There's Route 66, where does it take you? A new life, you know, dreams. Uh, the feeling of being free is something human beings yearn for. And that is what's going to drive people to, you know, unfolding their, getting hip to the scene and unfold their full potential. That, that yearning. The record is, has a lot of atmosphere, but a lot of that ac atmosphere is a little dark. But there's one song um, that is really uplifting, you know, good day today. And the, the, the lyric is, I want to have a good day today. something you say to yourself on a daily basis? I, I pictured it's something that everybody says to themselves. And um, that's part of the yearning. That song is more of a dance song. 
And that came about because my music agent wanted me to do some work with some girl who was into dance music. And I started thinking about dance music. So it's a little different um, than what Dean and I, you know, normally would, would do. There again, there's an expression. Where the attention is, that becomes lively. And that was a good example of that. In this cycle of songs, is there the kernel of some new big project that you want to do? No. There's not. Um, there could be a film someday that one of these songs would you know, live in. Right. But I don't know that right now. Like I say, I, you know, on Bobby Vinton's Blue Velvet, I heard it a bunch of times. I didn't like that song. Right. And then I heard it one day, and out came the starting ideas for Blue Velvet. So you never know what will happen, what will trigger the ideas. Mm -hmm. If you catch an idea, you know, any idea, it wasn't there, and then, it, and then it's there. Mm -hmm. It might just be a small fragment of, like I say, a feature film or a song or a lyric or whatever, but it's all there. You'll say, I'll never forget this idea, ever. Mm. This, is, this is so thrilling. Right. If you don't write it down, it could happen right. that the next day, then oh. you want to blow your brains out. Oh, it's that bad. If, it, 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 if, you lose, if you lose a great one. It hurts you that much. It hurts so bad. Mm. Money in the bank, safety to write it down. Right. Do you... Do you ever think you'll perform any music live? Probably not. It just brought out tremendous fear. and The idea of yeah. performing? Yeah. There are great, great musicians out on the road performing, and I'm not one of them. I think I have just like one other sure. fun question. Um, do you have any message to your fans in terms of this video and the song? No, I think people will understand this video and get into that world and appreciate that world. It's a familiar world. It feels like an American backyard party. Yes. But a little it. darker, maybe. Well, you know, it's an American story. Well said. Good deal, Eddie. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you, brother.